the United States Air Force has always had top-of-the-line fighter jets. Among these fighter jets, the A-10 rose to fame as a tank killer and the best close air support jet in the U.S. So when the A-10 resurfaced in the Middle East and Eastern Europe, after initial plans to retire it, it raised a few eyebrows. Since then, it has been used to carry out daredevil missions and has been utilized against the Houthis in the ongoing Israel-Hamas war in the Middle East. How effective is the A-10 fighter jet, and what do the enemies of the United States have to say about it? Join us in this video as we explore why America's new A-10 warthog shocked Yemen, Hamas, and Russia. Throughout its operational history, the A-10 Thunderbolt II, commonly referred to as the Warthog, has accumulated a significant amount of expertise in aerial operations. Since 1976, this esteemed aircraft, specifically designed for close air support, CAES, has been a vital part of the United States Air Force's weaponry. During the 1991 Gulf War, the United States deployed 144 A-10 aircraft which flew an impressive 8,077 sorties, showcasing their peak popularity and efficiency. Based on the data at hand, the average availability rate for A-10S in the fleet during battle was 95.7%. This was far greater in comparison to other fighter jets. Throughout the duration of the conflict, the A-10 aircraft successfully destroyed a total of 987 Iraqi tanks, 501 armored personnel carriers, 249 command posts, 96 radar sites, 72 bunkers, 1,306 trucks, 2,000 other vehicles, as well as 53 Scud missiles and missile launchers. Approximately 70 A-10S sustained damage but remained operational. Out of more than 8,000 missions, just six A-10S were successfully targeted and destroyed. Although there have been some advancements in air defense systems since 1991, most of the Russian air defenses currently being used in the fight in Ukraine are outdated and similar to what Iraq possessed in 1991. Featuring an exceptional design, the A-10 has thrived from its inception and has proven to be a highly dependable weapon system in the Gulf War, as well as subsequent conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. Major Kim Campbell, a female A-10 pilot, demonstrated the durability of the aircraft when she successfully flew her damaged plane back to base in Iraq for nearly an hour in 2003. Nevertheless, discussions of retiring the aircraft were underway until it saw a revival in Yemen amidst its civil war. The violent civil conflict exposed the limitations of the more recent versatile aircraft. The intricate strategies and substantial operational costs of these aircraft impeded their capacity to support ground forces in their conflict against well-established Houthi militants. Remarkably, the A-10 thrived. The aircraft's ability to maneuver at low speeds, its design focused on the pilot, and the well-known 30 Mnimi GAU-8 Avenger armament, humorously nicknamed Brutality, played a crucial role in effectively eliminating enemy positions while minimizing harm to civilians. Consequently, the Houthis would be compelled to adjust their strategy due to the A-10's presence, which showcased the aircraft's efficacy in low-intensity engagements. In addition, the unexpected deployment of the A-10 aircraft to support Israeli operations against Hamas in Gaza has caught many experts off guard. Throughout history, the Air Force has consistently depended on aircraft such as the F-16 to effectively deploy precision-guided weapons in highly populated urban areas. Nevertheless, the A-10's ability to linger in the sky and sustain uninterrupted surveillance over battlefields proved to be highly advantageous. Moreover, the GAU-8's remarkable accuracy has served as a practical alternative to airstrikes, thereby minimizing unintentional damage in heavily populated areas. This unexpected advantage showcased the A-10's capacity to adjust to modern urban combat, a factor that had previously been overlooked. 
Also, the revival of the A-10 could potentially have a particularly fascinating impact on Russia's strategic assessments. The significant presence of A-10S stationed in Eastern Europe serves as an effective deterrent against any Russian attack, in addition to their renowned capability for tank destruction. The presence of this aircraft, along with its current usage in the Middle East, poses a threat to Russia's control in armored combat and reinforces NATO's dedication to protecting its friends. This unexpected occurrence adds another dimension to the geopolitical landscape, reminding enemies of the unique characteristics of the A-10 and its ability to thwart their strategies. This revival and following efficacy has sparked discussion not only among enemy forces but also within the United States Air Force. In the past, discussions have taken place regarding the retirement of the A-10 in favor of more modern and versatile fighter aircraft. However, a reassessment has become necessary due to the A-10's economical operational expenses, its high level of favor among pilots, and its undeniable efficacy demonstrated in recent conflicts. The Air Force's original intention was to substitute the A-10 with the F-35. The limited availability of the F-35 is due to operational issues, and replacing it would significantly increase the operating costs per hour. The operational cost of the A-10 is around $6,000 per hour. In contrast, the F-35 has an hourly cost of $36,000, while the F-16C has an hourly cost of approximately $22,514. Simultaneously, the F-35 is incapable of fully substituting the firepower provided by the A-10. There is insufficient evidence to justify the effectiveness of the F-35 as a ground support aircraft, unless it is equipped with standoff weaponry. Furthermore, whereas the F-35 lacks the capability to offer close ground support due to the absence of a powerful Gatling-style autocannon, the A-10 is equipped with such a weapon and can effectively fulfill this role. In 2022, the F-35 had a capability rate of 54.58%, which is much lower compared to the A-10's 95.7%. The F-35 necessitates substantial support and is incapable of operating from forward bases. The A-10, on the other hand, is capable of utilizing nearly any airstrip and necessitates minimal support. The low rate of loss can thus be ascribed to the distinctive design of the product. Although the A-10 aircraft operates at speeds below the speed of sound, it has two jet engines positioned above the wings, which decreases the heat signature of the aircraft when observed from the ground. This feature provides enhanced protection for the A-10 aircraft against ground-launched infrared homing missiles, which are often found in most man pads, man portable air defense systems. Furthermore, the cockpit is shielded by a titanium enclosure, ensuring that the pilot is highly unlikely to be affected by ground fire. The fuel tanks are equipped with foam lining to prevent explosions in the event of a gunshot or shrapnel impact. The A-10 has become immensely significant due to all of these factors since its resurgence. Want to learn more about the A-10's design? Keep watching to do that. Featuring an iconic design, the A-10 was originally designed to enhance the firepower and overall performance of the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider. The airframe of the aircraft was specifically constructed to accommodate the formidable 30mm GAU-8 Avenger rotary autocannon, with a primary focus on ensuring robustness and longevity. The airplane is equipped with around 1,200 pounds. 540 kilograms of titanium armor to safeguard the cockpit and aircraft components. This enables the aircraft to withstand damage and persist in its mission without interruption. The A-10, known as Warthog among pilots, is a specialized single-seat attack aircraft designed specifically for close air support CAS missions. The design of this product is just as unique as its notoriety. Regarded as a crucial aircraft in the field of close air support, CAS, the major function of this aircraft is to offer immediate aerial assistance to ground soldiers involved in combat with hostile forces. This entails flying at a low altitude and reduced speed, accurately identifying targets, 
and delivering highly destructive weapons with exceptional precision. Additionally, it possesses the capability to perform takeoffs and landings on runways that are very short or unpaved. This allows for operations to be conducted from airstrips located in close proximity to the front lines. Furthermore, its uncomplicated design facilitates maintenance with minimal facilities. These attributes contributed to its success in the Gulf War, Operation Desert Storm, during which the American-led operation was carried out to counter Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. Additionally, it demonstrated its efficacy in various other conflicts, including the Balkans, Afghanistan, the Iraq War, and in combating the Islamic State in the Middle East. The A-10 straight-wing configuration enables exceptional maneuverability at low speeds and altitudes, a crucial capability for providing support to infantry engaged in close-quarters combat. The mobility of the aircraft is enhanced by the presence of large ailerons on the wings, which allow for precise aiming and rapid rotations. The pilot benefits from an exceptional perspective of the battlefield due to the cockpit's forward-facing bathtub form. The entire architecture of the A-10 is a clear demonstration of its durable and long-lasting design. The cockpit and vital components are surrounded by strong titanium armor plates, which enhance its ability to endure challenging conditions. The A-10 is intentionally designed to minimize the equipment needed for refueling, rearming, and servicing. This guarantees the feasibility of maintenance at forward bases that have restricted facilities. An exceptional feature of the aircraft is its high degree of part interchangeability between the left and right sides, encompassing crucial components such as the engines, main landing gear, and vertical stabilizers. Despite carrying a large amount of weapons, the aircraft is capable of operating from short and uneven runways due to its robust landing gear, low-pressure tires, and large, straight wings. This feature allows the aircraft to function from air bases that have been damaged, as well as from taxiways or even sections of straight roads. The A-10 possesses exceptional battle-hardening capabilities, enabling it to endure direct impacts from high-explosive and armor-piercing projectiles measuring up to 23 mm. The system includes a mechanical backup in case of hydraulic failure, along with dual-redundant hydraulic flying systems. The aircraft is designed to have the capability to perform takeoff and landing using only a single engine, one elevator, half of a tail, and one wing missing. The A-10 is equipped with both flares and chaff cartridges due to its proximity to enemy positions, making it very vulnerable to hostile aircraft, surface-to-air missiles, SAMs, and man-portable air defense systems, manpads. The fighter aircraft has four fuel tanks that are positioned toward the middle of the aircraft and are separated from the fuselage to minimize the risk of fuel system damage. Consequently, in order to reach the external surface of a fuel tank, bullets must first penetrate the aircraft's skin. Check valves are used to prevent damage that exceeds a tank's ability to repair itself. These valves block fuel from entering fuel transfer lines that have been damaged. To mitigate gasoline loss caused by component failure, most fuel system components are located within the tanks. Once the refueling system has been used, it is subsequently cleaned. The interior and external surfaces of the gasoline tanks are coated with reticulated polyurethane foam, which serves to prevent fuel spillage in the event of damage and also retains debris. Firewalls and fire suppression systems are installed to create a barrier between the engines and the rest of the airframe. Additionally, there are two self-sealing sump tanks that contain a sufficient amount of gasoline to cover a distance of 230 miles 370 kilometers, during a flight in the event that the four main tanks become unusable or are lost. The A-10's primary integrated armament is the 30.E-173 mm GAU-8 A Avenger autocannon. The GAU-8 is a hydraulic, seven-barrel rotary cannon specifically designed for anti-tank use, boasting a rapid rate of fire. It is one of the most powerful airplane cannons ever used in flight. Initially, the pilot had the option to choose between a range of 2,000, 104,200 rounds per minute of depleted uranium armor-piercing shells 
However, this was later changed to a constant rate of 3,900 rounds per minute. The cannon first discharges 50 projectiles during the first second and subsequently maintains a firing rate of around 65 to 70 rounds per second after a brief delay of half a second to reach its maximum rate of fire. During flight, this object has the capability to strike targets at distances of up to 4,000 feet 1, m, with a precision of 80% inside a circular area measuring 40 feet. 12.4 m in diameter. The GAU-8 is specifically designed to be used with the A-10 aircraft during a 30-degree descent, with a maximum effective range of 4,000 feet, 1,220 meters. Indeed, the cannon played a significant role in the design of the aircraft's fuselage. The barrel in the firing location is positioned on the right side of the aircraft, in line with the aircraft's center, whereas the GAU-8A is mounted slightly on the left side. The firearm's ammunition drum has a capacity of 1,350 rounds of 30 mmm ammunition. However, it typically holds 1,174 rounds. The drum measures 5 feet and 11.5 inches in length, which is equivalent to 1.816 meters. Armor plates of different thicknesses are strategically placed between the aircraft skin and the drum to detonate incoming shells, protecting the rounds from enemy fire. The A-10 often carries the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-surface missile as a standard weapon. The Maverick possesses a higher level of resistance against anti-aircraft systems due to its ability to engage targets at far greater distances compared to the cannon, particularly when employing electro-optical, TV-guided, or infrared systems. The supplementary weaponry consists of Hydra-70 rocket pods and cluster bombs. The A-10 is capable of carrying various GPS and laser-guided bombs, including the GBU-39 small-diameter bomb, Paveway series bombs, Joint Direct Attack Munitions, JDAM, Wind Corrected Munitions Dispenser, and AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon Glide Bombs. Usually, A-10 aircraft are outfitted with two AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles for self-defense on one wing and an ALQ-131 Electronic Countermeasures ECM pod on the other. The inclusion of these armaments has rendered the A-10 aircraft highly significant and efficient in its various roles. Keep watching to learn more about its operations in Yemen and its importance to the Allied forces' efforts. The remarkable efficacy of the A-10 became evident during its comeback in the midst of the harrowing civil war in Yemen. While originally intended for counter-terrorism operations, the deployment of the A-10 had a substantial influence on the dynamics of the battle by providing a distinct edge in assisting Allied forces against Houthi rebels. The primary objective of the A-10's initial deployment in Yemen was to target and eliminate terrorist organizations such as Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula AQAP. Nevertheless, the intricacies of the Yemeni civil war necessitated a change in focus. Despite their technological advancements, newer multi-role fighter jets had difficulties when used for close air support KAS missions. The A-10 aircraft demonstrated exceptional performance in flying at low altitudes and sluggish speeds, providing pilots with an excellent view of the ground to effectively detect and engage Houthi locations. The agility of the system enables accurate targeting, hence reducing the risk of civilian casualties, which is a significant worry in the heavily populated regions of Yemen. The GAU-8 Avenger gun, which is the distinctive weapon of the A-10 aircraft, demonstrated its immense destructive power against well-entrenched Houthi forces. The capacity to eliminate adversary positions with minimal unintended harm provided a notable edge in contrast to extensive aerial attacks. The very existence of the A-10, an iconic tank-destroying aircraft, also serves as a psychological deterrent. The Houthi militants had to modify their tactics in order to evade the destructive capability of the Warthog, which had a negative effect on their ability to launch offensives. Currently, the United States and the United Kingdom's armed forces are carrying out a retaliatory attack on terrorist targets in the Houthi-controlled regions of Yemen, similar to what is happening in the Middle East. 
This occurred subsequent to the group orchestrating assaults on commercial vessels in the Red Sea. President Joe Biden authorized the operations in response to safeguarding the security of international commerce routes and protecting the country from the Iran-backed extremist group. Based on preliminary information provided by Lieutenant General Alex Grinkowicz, the commander of the United States Air Forces Central, the U.S. and its coalition forces had successfully targeted and hit more than 60 areas associated with Iranian-backed Houthi militants. This operation involved the use of over 100 precision-guided missiles. The Houthi assets that were targeted consisted of command and control nodes, ammunition, depots, launching systems, production facilities, and air defense radar systems. According to another report, Lieutenant General Douglas Sims II, the director of the Joint Staff, stated that an additional 12 facilities were targeted shortly after the initial strikes, following a prompt decision. Since the commencement of the Israel-Hamas conflict in the previous year, the United States has deliberately endeavored to refrain from launching a direct assault on Yemen. This measure was implemented to exert control over the escalating tension in the region resulting from the conflict between Israel and Hamas. However, they have been compelled to take action in response to the Houthis' assault on commercial vessels in the area. While the United States has conducted military attacks against Iranian proxies in Iraq and Syria since the start of the conflict in Gaza, this is the first documented attack on the Houthis in Yemen. The strikes were carried out by fighter jets such as the A-10 and Tomahawk missiles. According to publicly available news sources, missiles were launched from various air, surface, and sub-platforms to target over a dozen Houthi locations. These targets were specifically selected to weaken the Houthis' ongoing attacks on ships in the Red Sea. In an ongoing offensive against the terrorist organization, multiple U.S. submarines and warships have entered the region since the commencement of the war. The USS Florida, a ballistic missile submarine that entered the Red Sea on November 23, 2023, participated in the military operation against Yemen. The engagement also involved the participation of the USS Philippine Sea, a guided missile cruiser, as well as two Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers, namely the USS Gravely and the USS Mason. The Air Force sent a total of 22 fixed-wing aircraft, which included F-18S, from the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier. The inclusion of A-10 aircraft in the conflict has significantly mitigated civilian death. As per the statements of a high-ranking U.S. military officer, he stated that he was unable to provide a precise proportion of Houthi assets that were destroyed in the strikes, but emphasized that the destruction was substantial. He stated that precision-guided weapons were employed to annihilate the targets, while also reducing unintended harm to surrounding areas. Our intention was unequivocally not to direct our efforts towards areas densely populated by civilians. The official stated that our objective was to target precise places with precision weapons focusing on certain capabilities. But how did Hamas react to the presence of the A-10 Warthog in the region? Stay tuned to uncover their response. Following the United States retaliatory strike on the Houthi group, the terrorist organization and its allies promptly issued statements addressing the incident and expressing their stance on it. Hamas strongly condemns the American aggression against Iraq and Syria, viewing it as a dangerous escalation that violates the sovereignty of the two Arab nations. This action poses a threat to their security and the stability of the region. Furthermore, Hamas believes that this aggression serves the expansionist agenda of the occupying force and aims to conceal its appalling crimes against the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. The Biden administration is accountable for the repercussions of this ruthless attack on Iraq and Syria, which exacerbates the situation. We assert that stability and peace in the region can only be achieved by halting the Zionist aggression, genocide, and ethnic cleansing perpetrated against our people in the Gaza Strip and by putting an end to the Zionist Nazi occupation. Hezbollah issued a statement expressing strong condemnation of the overt American assault towards Iraq and Syria, 
the actions taken by the United States of America represent a clear and flagrant disregard for the sovereignty of the two nations, an assault on their security and territorial integrity, and a brazen violation of both international and humanitarian laws. Prior to the imminent attack, Major General Pat Ryder, the spokesperson for the Pentagon, stated that Iran has a responsibility to contribute to persuading the Houthis to cease their irresponsible, hazardous, and unlawful actions. In the absence of their compliance, he warned, there will be repercussions. Hussein Alezi, the deputy foreign minister of the Houthi group, asserted that Yemen was subjected to a substantial and forceful attack. During a speech after the incident, Houthi leader Abdul Malik al-Houthi issued a warning that any U.S. aggression on Yemen will not be left without a response. He cryptically indicated that the retaliation would surpass mere attacks on U.S. ships at sea. Sarii, the military spokeswoman for the Houthi rebels, stated that they want to persist in their hostile actions towards commercial vessels in the Red Sea. Mohammed Ali al-Houthi, the leader of the group's Supreme Revolutionary Committee, expressed on social media that the airstrikes are savage, terrorist, and constitute a planned and unwarranted act of aggression that reveals a cruel mindset. Thus far, Hamas and Houthi have only engaged in verbal rhetoric without taking any concrete steps. The military operation against the Houthi group has been widely regarded as a significant and conclusive one, effectively incapacitating their military capabilities in the area. The Houthis, an Iran-backed Shia political and military group engaged in a civil war in Yemen against a Saudi Arabia-backed coalition, have been consistently deploying unmanned aerial vehicles and projectiles towards commercial shipping vessels in the Red Sea for several weeks. A significant number of these attacks have been successfully intercepted and neutralized by United States Navy ships stationed in the vicinity. The Houthis have stated that their bombardments are a demonstration of support for the Palestinian people. In response to Israel's relentless military campaign on Gaza following the terror acts carried out by Hamas on October 7th, the Houthis have also stated that they will only back down when Israel permits the importation of food and medicine into Gaza. Their attacks may be aimed at causing economic hardship for Israel's supporters, with the expectation that they will exert pressure on Israel to halt its military campaign. Consequently, the Houthi assaults on Red Sea ships served as the decisive factor that led to Biden authorizing the U.S. to proceed with Thursday's airstrikes. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin is currently in the hospital due to difficulties arising from a procedure he underwent for prostate cancer. A high-ranking defense official stated that Austin commanded and supervised the strikes in real time from the hospital, utilizing a comprehensive set of secret communications. In recent weeks, Biden has considered launching attacks on Houthi sites in Yemen while taking into account the possibility of a worsening crisis in the Middle East. The primary reason for his reluctance to authorize direct action is the possibility of becoming more deeply involved in a growing confrontation, which American officials believe is Iran's ultimate goal. However, the White House had explicitly stated that the ongoing Houthi assaults on global maritime routes in the Southern Red Sea were unacceptable. The attacks have compelled several of the world's top shipping firms to circumvent the waterway thereby augmenting thousands of miles to international trade routes by navigating around the continent of Africa. Nevertheless, senior officials in the U.S. government anticipate that there may be other measures taken by both supporters and opponents of the Houthis. Following the counteroffensive, the Houthis have launched a minimum of one anti-ship ballistic missile targeting a commercial vessel. Nevertheless, the ballistic missile failed to strike any vessels of any type. It is anticipated that Iran may be compelled to cease its backing for Houthi and Hamas in their proxy conflict with Israel, or alternatively, intensify its commitment to its objectives. Reports indicate that the United States is closely monitoring their activities in order to assess their response and make appropriate preparations. Nevertheless, Iran and other nations where Houthi and Hamas have established a presence have criticized the military action carried out by the United States against Houthi forces. 
Nasser Kanani, spokesperson for Iran's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, asserts that the assaults constitute a breach of Iraq and Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity, as well as a violation of international law and the United Nations Charter. How does Russia view the deployment of the A-10, especially with tensions running high in Eastern Europe? Join us as we delve into Russia's strategic concerns in the next chapter. Following the retaliatory action by the United States against the Houthi group in Yemen, Russia has issued a statement denouncing the U.S. attack. According to a statement issued by Maria Zakharova, the spokesperson for Russia's foreign ministry, it is evident that the bombings are intentionally intended to exacerbate the war. The United States is deliberately targeting the facilities of purportedly pro-Iranian forces in Iraq and Syria in a continuous manner, with the intention of provoking confrontation among the major countries in the region. Russia requested an urgent convening of the United Nations Security Council in response to the U.S. strikes. Dmitry Polyansky, Russia's representative to the United Nations, recently stated on social media that they have requested an immediate convening of the UN Security Council. The purpose of this request is to address the concern of the potential disruption of peace and security caused by the United States' military actions in Syria and Iraq. Analysts assert that the deployment of the A-10 Thunderbolt II in the Middle East and crucial areas near Russia's borders has sparked renewed discussions and worries regarding American air power and its impact on regional security. The A-10's widely recognized anti-tank capabilities and close air support CAS, expertise pose a distinct challenge for Russian military strategists. Throughout history, Russia has mainly depended on ground-attack aircraft that are equipped with robust armor. The Il-2 Sturmovik, a fighter aircraft from World War II known as the Flying Tank, had a crucial role in shaping the Soviet Union's emphasis on close air support CAS. The legacy of the Su-25 Frogfoot endured as it emerged as a direct rival to the A-10. Both aircraft possess a comparable design philosophy, characterized by a robust and fortified structure intended to endure the rigors of combat and effectively deliver a destructive payload. Nevertheless, the A-10 possesses a notable advantage, its 30-MEME GAU-8 Avenger cannon. This formidable fighter jet employs depleted uranium rounds that have the ability to tear through armored vehicles. Although Russia has sophisticated anti-air systems, the A-10's ability to operate at low altitudes makes it a challenging target for conventional radar. This surely attracts Russia's interest. The A-10's revival and subsequent deployment in the Middle East coincided with a period of increased tensions between the United States and Russia. Given the ongoing disputes regarding NATO expansion and the wars in Ukraine and Syria, the deployment of the A-10 near Russia's borders can be interpreted as a possible escalation, demonstrating America's dedication to addressing regional security issues. It can also be viewed as a means of discouraging Russia's aspirations in Eastern Europe as it enhances NATO's aerial capabilities in the region. This enhances the alliance's capacity to deliver close air support CAS, to its member states, thereby deterring possible acts of aggression by Russia and demonstrating a united stance against perceived dangers. Despite its age, the A-10 fighter plane is renowned in Russia for its exceptional capabilities, efficiency in specific scenarios, durability, and capacity to function in challenging environments. Russia, through its proxies such as the Wagner Group, may view the A-10's combat record in the Middle East as a possible obstacle to its military operations in the region, particularly in countries like Syria, where both nations have been engaged in the conflict. This is due to Russia's vested interests in the Middle East. However, in addition to serving as a deterrent and displaying military might, the deployment of the A-10 aircraft in regions where Russian and American military operations overlap can be interpreted as an indication of the United States' willingness to initiate a conflict. What better method to demonstrate your superiority to a Cold War adversary than by showcasing Cold War-era aircraft?